kids and they wife. I'll probably be here for the rest of my life. I'm living on the island. When summer comes and winter falls, the island ladies go to shopping malls, take daddy's credit card, charge it all. They're living on an island. I will live on Long Island. Oh, you know it's so much fun. I'm living on the island. I'm just basking in the sun. Hey, Edney, give me a vodka. Is that your Camaro? It's gorgeous. You know, I went to high school with Billy Joel. <laughs> I go to Hampton's on Friday night. I party hardy till sunshine bright. Then I'm sitting in traffic on Sunday night. I'm living on an island. Yeah, living on Long Island. Oh, you know it's so much fun. I'm living on the island. I'm not hurting anyone. Ah. Hey! Yay! We're back. It's, how long has it been? Since before Thanksgiving, right? Right. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. That feels like a million years ago. <laughs> Since before, and it's almost Christmas. Yeah. Getting close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you... we're back. Uh, I want to explain something about the Gagoo Show, because so some people know. We're on twice a month, okay? Twice a month, the second week and fourth week of uh, every month. That's a lot so of if math. there's five weeks, we're not here on the, and it's always a Tuesday from seven to eight p.m. Tuesday is the new Friday. <laughs> is the new Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, sure. If you're not going to go to work for the next two days, it's a plan. It's a All plan. Right. I, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately. Well, the next show that we do, uh, I will be uh, off from work. I will as so well. We, yeah, so we can like hang out and party. Oh, awesome. Well, we'll <laughs> definitely have like some drinks here and stuff like that. Right. We'll have a good time. Anyway, I want to say a little bit about, I'm very excited about tonight's show. Yes. Super excited. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, you want to tell? I, I mean, I, no, go ahead. <laughs> I, I always go. Okay. Go, go. We have two authors, two uh, Long Island authors, and uh, they also own a bookshop called the Dog-Eared Bards Bookshop. And you, I've talked forward. about them in the last episode. Like, mm -hmm. uh, last you know, two episodes. Before, last two three episodes, three episodes, maybe. Yeah. And uh, we're going to speak to, I'm very excited. To, we're going to speak to Jillian Wagner and speak about her book, 13 Dark Tales. Then we're going to have James Wagner come on. And he's, he's going to t tell us some... Uh, about the shop, about the bookshop, and then he's going to read some po some of his poetry. I don't even know how they had time to come here with everything they do. They have the bookshop. They make coffee. They oh, have wait, merchandise. don't give away. Right, no, I won't give everything. Spoiler. No, spo spoiler. no spoiler. Yeah, no spoiler. But so, so much. All right. I do have something I want to talk about. This is episode six. Okay. Because, right? So on episode five... I had a T-shirt because it was our Thanksgiving show. Mm -hmm. I had a T-shirt with Arlo Guthrie. I remember I wanted right? to steal yeah, it. Yeah, and yes. you wanted to steal it. Correct. And you talked about you wanted to steal it, and you wanted to steal a couple of other rock, rock T-shirts I own. Right, right. Pink Floyd, a couple of them, yep. So when you left, we, I knew you were joking, but you left, and I was here wrapping up and putting everything away in my car, and I couldn't find my phone. Oh. And I, didn't, I had no idea where is my phone. I knew... And I couldn't find it. And finally, Bobby's helping me look for it. And we're looking all over. And he says, and you, you know, you wonder, well, did it fall out of my pocket? Did it, Is it in the so couch? There, yeah, so we called it. And then when we called it, my wife called the studio here. Mm -hmm. And Bobby says, your wife's on the phone. So like, I knew right away. And she's like, Jen has your wallet. I mean, your Jen has your phone. And also, not my wallet. wallet. I straight up robbed you. <laughs> <laughs> I just pushed she has you over. Your wallet and your phone. Grabbed your stuff. Jen has your phone, and she's going to come home. So you went to where you live, which is deep in Nassau County. Yeah. And you had to go out where I live, where there are deer crossing signs. There, there were deer crossing signs. <laughs> Lovely yeah. dead end. Beautiful home. Totally worth the drive. Very scenic. Had a great time. <laughs> Very sorry but about you, that. But you stole my phone. I did, so but I now, did bring you pumpkin bread. You brought me pumpkin bread. You did. Everybody wins. And Claire, who was dressed as a turkey on the show, was still t in the turkey costume. I chased her around the front of your um, house because I wanted to, like, rustle up your neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> that was very funny. Yes, it was. <laughs> that was funny. So, uh, now it's Christmas time. 
Uh, yeah, I've heard. Okay, the holidays were. Uh, are you done shopping? No, holiday shop? no. But every this year is like, I, I ask people what they want, right? I'm like, what do you want? Because I don't want to like just give them a gift they're gonna like throw away. And people didn't get back to me timely this year. It feels very chaotic for some reason this year. Um, so everybody's pretty much getting gift cards. <laughs> And give them a copy of this book. I'm thinking actually that, and I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to, well, you know, give anything away. But there's other things you can get as well, and okay, you know, yes. there's there's much more. This is much more than a bookstore. So yeah, so, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. It's a little diamond in the rough of <laughs> Northport. So very excited. Speaking of books, so, I wanted to read an excerpt of a book that I wrote. You did. You wrote this. I did write this book in like second or first grade. Oh wow! Thank you. <laughs> so I'm very, I'm multi-talented, and this is a book I wrote, and I just wanted to read an excerpt to kick us off on our author day. I feel like this is like a book day. Yeah, know? yeah. <clears throat> it is. From a book I wrote called Special Times to Remember, I think first grade. My mom is smart. I know she is A-plus at everything. My mom has a wonderful face. She is my role model. I think my mom is a very pretty lady. She has brown hair and hazel eyes just like me. In her spare time, she likes to drink tea. She doesn't like to cook, shop, or clean, but she does it anyway. She's so cool, 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 cool. You like what I did there? She looks out for me. She doesn't let me out after eight because she's afraid someone might kidnap me. I think she's been watching too many mysteries. My mom is number one to me, and I love her. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. Great. I know it's a lot to unpack. <laughs> But I'm going to let everyone marinate on that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I like it. I know. You know, it's very it should, genuine. Maybe you should find out if you can uh, publish that yourself. They've published over 500 books. I don't think this is the type of quality that they would publish, though. <laughs> I'm not sure. The, the illustrations are, uh, it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot. All right. Anyway. Uh, you're not going to publish the book, but you do have some shows coming up. I do have a show. I actually have a show this Friday, which is the 16th. Yes. I'll go with that. <laughs> um, at Governor's in Levittown. Get your tickets now. You have to buy them in advance. Um, it's going to be a great lineup. Carla Oakerson, um, Kathy Arnold, um, Tim Saliani, and who the... Uh, Janice Masitti, Jan who, who I love. I I've done I've done quite a few shows with Janice. Is and, she good? Oh, she's great. Oh, I can't wait and to she, meet her. She doesn't tell the same joke. You know, her material is different all the time. Oh. And someone she's always funny, really funny, great person, great great person to know too. Cool. Well, but, I'm uh, looking forward yeah. to meeting her, and you might come by, which is cool. I might come by. So if there's if time. we if the weather is uh, weather permitting, I will. Be at that show. Well, I'm also hoping with, that with my wife Nancy. Nancy, I know for Halloween went around and, and posted all the good Halloween houses she liked. So I'm like really counting her on her to do that for the Christmas houses as well. Uh, yes, I, I, she probably will. Yeah, because she so will. I understand if you don't have time, that that takes up a lot of time. All right. Anyway, uh, while we're all shopping and doing you know doing things for the holidays, our friend Alfredo Gagutz went on a date. Oh, bad time to be dating, but let's go. <laughs> he went out on a first date, so let's see the video. Good luck, Alfredo. So, hey, baby, you have a good time tonight? Sure. Oh, you're so nice. You're the nicest person I ever take out on a date. Oh, that's very sweet. You. Renee May, I take you here to the cemetery to meet my mom. Because I only go out with a girl if I get the approval from my mama. I think a mama should approve of you. What do you mean when I'm meeting your mother? We're at a graveyard. Oh, she's dead. Because I know she no lightning, no lightning to come down. Mama, you like it as a nicer girl, mama. The next time we go out, I give you a nice and big fat sauce eats it. Sausage? You look more like the breakfast sausage. And for dessert, I give you a cream filled cannoli.
And we're back. And we're back with our very special guest, Jillian Wagner. Hello, thank you da -da -da. for having me here. Oh, thank you. She's so proper. Yeah. I love this. She's so sweet. Thank you. Yeah. Well, again, thank you for having me here. I'm very happy to be here. Oh, wow. Great. I'm very happy to have you here. <laughs> the, I met you, I, I met your husband uh, a few weeks earlier than that at a, uh, a poetry workshop, which you do at the shop. And then I, I saw that there was going to be a book launch. And there was a book launch with, uh, and it was horror. And I love horror. Thir called 13 Dark Tales. We love horror. We love horror. We love horror. So uh, I went to the book launch and I was quite impressed because there's a movie with Gina Davis. I don't remember the movie, but it was like she was like a homemaker housewife. And she's like, oh dear, I burnt the muffins. And then she something happened. She was in an accident. And it came out that she was actually, uh, she was actually a, uh, like a, uh, what do you call it? like a secret, not secret service, but she was like, like somebody's, like a hitman, a hit This woman. is a real movie I would like to watch it. If yeah, you just yeah. made it up, you'd write it down. I believe it's called Forget like the, the Long one. Kiss Goodnight or something oh. like that. Hmm. Hmm. I'm, I'm, uh, with Samuel Jackson's in it. So he said to her, he says, one minute you're like, oh darn, I burnt the muffins, and the next minute you're blowing somebody's brains out. <laughs> That's definitely and, how I felt reading this book. And then <laughs> having met you, I was like, because these, these 13 dark tales are are dark. Like, they're... Idea. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> they, you know what? It scares the hell out of me. I And uh, I'm a little scared of you because I, you're like, you're so sweet and everything. Like like Annie Wilkes and Annie... Uh, was it a Annie Wilkes, Annie in, Wilkes misery? in Misery? <laughs> like Annie Wilkes in Misery. She's so sweet, but then she she read these two stories... And I was like, I already bought the book, but I was like, oh, man, I have to read this book. I have to get, yeah. the, because these two stories were dark. Very and dark. Very dark. Uh, one was humorous, dark but and humorous, which uh, I believe you, is that the one you're going to be reading from? Um, I'm going to be reading from the one uh, Jen said she loved best. Uh, and the one that everybody seems to love, uh, it's called The Tale of the Favorite Doll and features a little unicorn named Sparkles. And, and I see you have your <laughs> old friend uh, Sparkles here. Yeah. He really couldn't help himself. He he messaged me that picture. He's like, "Look what I found!" And I'm like, "It's perfect! It's perfect!" Indeed. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I have that. And I just found out there's something special about this unicorn. Uh, now I'm nervous. Okay. Hello, I'm wait. Hello, I'm Sparkles. I can't get it, you can get it to talk. Well, he makes no comment. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh dear. Oh my. Hey, you can get me to talk. No, it didn't work that time. All right, anyway, we played enough. Uh, with Jen will uh, figure it out. Hi, I'm Sparkles. <laughs> this is hard to do. Hi, I'm Sparkles. There you go. All right. Boom. <laughs> oh, this thing, this thing really yeah, likes yeah. me. <laughs> oh wow, maybe it keep, if it keeps. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, all right, enough of this. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Oh wow, fun. I just wow. found out the other day. Yeah. That is fun. I'm scared of it. Put now. it in the front. You got it. You're scared yeah. of it now? Yeah. That was that was like menacing. Speaking of a menacing unicorn. Yeah. All right. Let's see. So um, I actually came up with this one. Uh, I never owned a stuffed unicorn growing up, but a friend of mine did. And I never forgot that unicorn. It was just always hanging around her house. And when I started writing um, my 13 Dark Tales, my sisters and I would always laugh at the notion of a haunted doll because we, we had watched um, clips from Child's Play. Mm -hmm. And we thought, you know, obviously people love Chucky. I get it. It's kind of darkly humorous, but at the same time, my sisters and I would be like, "He's a doll. 
you know, what are you going to do? Lucky throw you just drop kick Throw him yeah. in a pool of water. Goodbye, Chucky. <laughs> so I, thought, I got to thinking, how would I do uh, a fa an, uh, an evil doll story? And uh, the result was, uh, I don't really consider Sparkles evil, so readers will have to tell me, but uh, here is a, an excerpt of The Tale of the Favorite Doll. If anyone were to ask Mina Miller what her favorite thing in the world was, the three-year-old would have answered, Sparkles. By Sparkles, the little girl was referring to her stuffed unicorn, who was her constant companion. The size of an average teddy bear, Sparkles had a body of white fur, large blue eyes of plastic, thick woolly strands for his mane and tail, and shiny gold fabric around his horn and hooves. As far as stuffed toys went, he wasn't all that special, perhaps, but to Mina, that unicorn doll was her whole world. Come on, Sparkles, let's go play outside! And away they would go, Sparkles' head bobbing in Mina's grip as the little girl pranced about on the lawn. All the while, Mina's Mar mother Mary and her father Richard would watch the duo, chuckling to themselves as Mina carried on lively conversations with her stuffed companion. I wish every day could be summer. Well, except for Christmas and Halloween. But every other day should be summer. Right, Sparkles? Sparkles made no comment. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I actually got like, yep. I got like chills from that. I'm going to be honest, because I had read the book. And I, I urge everyone to buy the book and, and to read it, because it does twist around. Everything is like a nice, ironic twist. And uh, that is definitely one of my favorites. But there is like some very dark dark stuff in there. I, I kind of enjoy doing that because a lot of stories I got to thinking of, um, actually the one, uh, one of them is the uh, tale number two, the tale of the hunters. That, uh, I, did you ever read Stephen King's book, The Institute? I did not read The Institute. That is, I consider that to be one of his darkest works. And to not to go into too uh, many spoilers, but it does involve kidnapping children. And I just remember thinking, I want some karma. So I wrote it myself. I was like, what's gonna happen if someone tries to kidnap kids in my universe? Something horrible. It is definitely, definitely read the book, see what We were talking, talking about. about that story before you both <laughs> came here. When I was reading it, I messaged Benny. I'm like, what am I reading? <laughs> I actually put the book down because it was very dark at a point. And, and if, if you love horror, I'm, I'm not just saying, if you love horror, this is a book. This is a young horror author who you're going to want more. Yeah. Oh, so you have to you. buy this book because you, you'll want. And I'm a lover of short stories. I always have. I'm two of my favorite authors. I'm more science fiction, but Ray Bradbury mm -hmm. and Harlan Ellison. Yes. But then there was a horror writer named Joe R. Lansdale. Are you f familiar with him? I don't know him off the top of my head. I'm going to have to go look him up. Then. Look him up because I think you might like his, uh, his horror stories are very interesting, too. They're like, you don't know where you're going, which is with a few of your stories. <laughs> you don't know. So far, my favorite one is I, I like them all, but I like The Whispering or The Whispers. Oh, The Tale of the Whispering? Tale of the Whispering. Yes. Whoa, I really like that one. That one was I, good. Yes, I, I had a lot of fun the, writing that one because um, I actually discovered H.P. Uh, Lovecraft in college. We had to read The Call of Cthulhu. And just the idea of these otherworldly creatures, you know, constantly on the edge of our reality, whispering to us, influencing people to do something, that always stuck with me. And I just remember thinking, I have to do something with that. So I did. Oh, yeah, it's really good. <laughs> I love that. I had to do something, so I did. Like yeah, the no. Uh, motto. I hope so. Because <laughs> I, I had a lot of fun writing these. I've been writing them since um, I was in high school. It was quite a few years ago. But I just had a lot of fun playing with different ideas. Um, I had other ideas. I cut some stories. I improved others. And I hope the final product was worth it. Uh, judging from the reactions I get, people seem to really enjoy it. And that just makes me very happy. How can we get the book? Uh, you, you can come into the store, uh, the Dog Ear Bards Bookshop, and you can buy it. It's also available on Amazon. Oh, okay. Dun, 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 dun. I just want to mention real quick, it is a yeah, dense yeah. read. It is a very dense read. So, like, once you pick it up, you'll get through it quicker than you think you will. And, it, like I said, it, it's interesting. So, you, you don't put it down. I think I read it, and, and I have a toddler. I read it in two nights. There is a new voice in horror. And it's Jillian Wagner. Thank you. <laughs> that's kind of a cliched uh, thing, but but no, that's I really feel that way. You're a new voice, and, and you're on Long Island. Yes. Which is well, thank you. if I scared you, I did my job, yeah. and I'm very pleased with that. Oh yeah, you did. I'm Mild mannered by day, <laughs> and by book, absolutely insanely creepy, dark, totally messes you up. This showed up today, and I was like, "Who is this person?" <laughs> I did not expect it, so I you got to get the book. Okay, I have to say, uh, Jen, when, when she was reading the book, she had no idea what you look like or anything. 
So she's reading the book, and then uh, she says, you know, there's some stories that are disturbing. This is really <laughs> creepy. But she, yeah, very creepy, but she's still reading it. <laughs> and then uh, when she, I finished the book, I said, here's a picture of Jillian. And I sent it, and she's like, I would have never. Never in a million years. Never in a million years. You would think that, you know, you work in a library and, uh, and, you, you, write, and you write history, <laughs> yeah. But you, like, write history uh, books or something. Yeah, no, Rome. horror has always stuck with me. In fact, one of my earliest memories, I, I do talk about this in the foreword, yes. is of uh, my older cousin Jeffrey, who's a couple years older than me. He would be telling me these creepy stories, and one was a werewolf story, believe it or not, and he'd be chasing me around our grandparents' condo, and I'd be <laughs> laughing and running away from him, but I always wanted more. And I would always come up to him and ask him, you know, what else can you tell me that's scary? And I think he was the one who told me about Goosebumps, and I started reading those religiously. Mm -hmm. And I, a Goosebumps book was how my parents bribed me on errands. <laughs> Were you around for fear? Street? I, I remember reading some Fear Street when I was volunteering at a library when I was in um, seventh grade. Those are pretty good. Um, I loved scary stories to tell in the dark. Oh, yes. Absolutely love those. So um, good. So good. Oh, yeah. Always checking those out from the library. Um, and I was also a big fan of the show, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Oh, yeah. And I <laughs> highly recommend people, if you grew up with that, to go back and watch that with an adult eye because some of them... It's really creepy still. Some of them are, are very, very creepy, but some of them talk about things it's like, there's an episode about survivor's guilt. Really? Yes. I, I actually have the DVDs. I'll have to take a look That's at that. That's uh, the Tale of the Shining Red Bicycle. But yeah, as a kid, it's a creepy ghost story. As an adult, your jaw kind of drops at what they got away with. Nickelodeon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I used to watch Nickelodeon too because my son is around the same age. And uh, so I would watch that, it, those shows and they, they were good. Yeah. They were good because I was a fan of Twilight Zone. Oh, when I, I was oh, young, you know. Obsessed when I was younger with Twilight and Zone. I, I used to get a subscription to the, was a Twilight Zone magazine Ooh, nice. with horror writers and uh, a lot of different writers. So anyway, we're going to go to, uh, let's go to a video. All right, what are we watching? And then we'll come back Wonderful. with James Wagner. Woo! And Jillian will still be, you'll still be here on the couch. Oh, of course. Excellent. And we'll, we'll talk books. Let's talk books, man. <laughs> Roll it, Bobby. <laughs> Ciao, my friends. It's me, Alfredo Gogoots, celebrity chef, and I love you. Here's a five of things to remember never to forget. The five. Number one, sauce or gravy? Is a sauce. Is a sauce. How many times I tell you is a sauce? Uh, here's another thing. Whoever says you can't have your cake and eat it too is a lousy cook. You don't want to eat in that house. I got a Taco Bell before I eat over there. Here's another thing. You can't buy a stairway to heaven, but you can buy the Brooklyn Bridge. I got an idea, the Brooklyn Bridge, I sell it to you, no problem. Here's another thing. Even the grass always looks greener on the other side. Maybe you need a new landscape. I got one more thing. People who dance to the beat of a different drum I got a bongo up in their ass. I don't kid you not. And that's a five of things to remember never to forget. The show, my friends. Thank you. I see you again soon. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> Holy crap. Holy crap all. And we're back <laughs> with James Wagner. Hey. James. It's great to who, be here. Yo, know, thank you so much for coming. Of course. Thanks yeah. for having me. So uh, tell us a little bit about the, we've talked about the Dog-Eared Bard Bookshop, mm -hmm. but uh, tell us in detail everything, uh, because Jenna was almost gave it away before. I gave a lot away already. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I know it's more than just a book uh, bookshop. Tell us all the specialness of the Dog-Eared Bard. Well, basically the way it kind of came to be was, uh, well, you know, there was this thing that was going on 
in the planet for a couple of years. It kind of shut everything down and was just not pleasant at all. Um, but you know, I've um, you know run a publishing company, Local Gems Press, for uh, the last 12, 13 years, and we specialize in poetry and poetry anthology and events. And we'd have like you know live launch events up and down the East Coast. And we had a very thriving poetry community here on Long Island. Oh. Uh, like before COVID, it was like. You know, every night of the week, there were probably two different events you could go to. You'd, you'd actually get, like, people fighting over which one to go to and, like, indecision because there was so much going on. And then COVID happened, and then a lot of the places that we used to have our poetry events, uh, you know, they either closed for good, libraries stopped having live events, they kind of went to Zoom, and, you know, so cafes went under, bookstores went under, all this stuff. And so um, for a lot of years, you know, I'd kind of had the ambition to have, like, a place that was kind of like a headquarters for, like, what we did or whatever, and, you know, a place to have our live events. And so it just kind of seemed like it was time to do that because, you know, there was a need for it. So we, uh, you know, found a location in in my town. Uh, I've been. Uh, I, I like to say that I'm, uh, you know, lived in the five boroughs of Northport my whole life uh, because, you know, Northport East, Northport Ashroken, uh, you know, all that stuff or whatever. So, uh, but found a good place and it was actually on the same road as uh, where my dad had his, uh, you know, business back in the late 90s. Oh, that's so sweet. So it was really cool right on Larkfield Road. So we got the location and, you know, at first I was kind of like debating what type of location to go for because I, was, I had several things in mind. I needed like an office for the publishing. I wanted event space and then a storefront. I found this place and it kind of had all three of them wrapped into one. So yeah. it's like in the back, I've got the publishing offices in the middle. We have the event space or the multi-purpose area, and then the front, it's like the consistent bookstore. And so, uh, you know, we opened it up last year in, uh, you know, October 15th, uh, 2021, and, you know, it was, uh, you know, we launched it with a bunch of poetry events and things like that. And so we, uh, you know, we deal with uh, used antiquarian and independent books. So, you know, used books, old, rare collectible books, and then the independent titles, you know, that we publish are things, you know, obviously things like 13 Dark Tales, you know, things like Bard's Annual, you know, our annual poetry publication, um, oh, you know, that. books from all different places like that that we've done the anthologies up and down the East Coast. And we, you know, we try to build it to be like a, you know, a home for, uh, you know, poets and writers and things like that too. We have monthly poetry events there. The first Friday of every month we do our poetry reading. You know, we've had book launch events like, you know, you've been to a couple of them, poetry workshops, things like that. And, uh, yeah, you know, I know that you, you may have uh, given it away a little bit. We've also got our own tea brand and our own uh, coffee brand. So <laughs> That is great. That is really cool. In a nutshell, I guess, <laughs> it sounds like you need to actually give tours of the place. <laughs> it's like, and here's a bookstore in the publishing area. Please grab a cup of coffee on your way in. Yeah, you know what's great about this store? When you walk in, it looks small, but there is so much. It's like a book. Yeah, The book is small, but once you open it, it opens your mind and you... This metaphor is amazing. <laughs> it's blowing my mind right now. She loves me. I, I, <laughs> I do. And, and I don't even have to drug her. <laughs> I, I already come drugged. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but uh, that's when you, you walk in one time when I actually spent some time in there for the book, before the book launch. I was there earlier. Mm -hmm. I was looking around and there was so great variety and I'm a... I'm a big fan of vintage books. I, I yeah, have same. quite a few vintage books at my house as well. Like uh, Dashiell Hammett, I have a an old Dashiell Hammett, uh, five, his five novels that he wrote. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. The Maltese Falcon and... Uh, yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, The Thin Man, See, all in one. I'll have to go because A, the smell of books. Let's talk about it. <laughs> There's nothing like that smell of a book. Mm -hmm. I, but it's actually very long. The store is actually very long and and not smelly. Other... No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it smells of coffee because yes. you know we have coffee brewing. That's or whatever. absolutely delightful. So. Like there's nothing. I... Is there a place to sit? Uh, when we have event, you know, because the um, it kind of varies because we have like a, the the middle area is like a multi-purpose room, and when we have events like you know certain sales like you know used topic sales or poetry events, we pull the curtain back. There's you know I call there's the organic row of chairs, which is about ten you know nice comfy chairs, and then when there's enough people, we put out the folding chairs or whatever. Uh, some days during the week, it's just the storefront in the front where it's uh, you know just kind of browsing or whatever because that kind of depends on what's going on. So it's kind of like you know sometimes more of it's open than than the rest, but uh, you know it kind of sounds like old New York though. Like you could walk in, maybe grab a cup of coffee, go through the books, and then mm -hmm. for the big events, the curtain opens, like you said. Yeah. That's that's, exactly that's a nice setup. The magic you, happens. You had a really events. nice crowd. I saw a picture of uh, the poetry uh, event that you had, and I wanted to go, but... Oh, yeah, the, fir the first Friday, asleep. yeah. Yeah, no, those are uh, typically always I couldn't pretty stay bad. awake. <laughs> it's sad when you reach away. I couldn't he, stay. He I gets was really like, mad. I'll, I'll, like, add Benny to Because I live all the way. I live on the on South himself. Shore. Oh, okay. So it's yeah. like uh, 20 minutes or so to get to the store shop. Yeah. And then, you know, I don't want to be one of those old guys like, you want to wake Benny up. 
wake Benny up, tell him that the <laughs> he gets really poetry mad. reading's <laughs> over. Tell him it's he over. Jumps out of the group chat, texts me <laughs> privately, curses me out. I didn't I'm curse so you sad. out. You didn't have to. I already felt bad about it. She I knew you were saying. put me in a group chat. I know. And then she got an impulse. I wake up at 4.30 really in the excited. morning. It's I wake up something. early in the morning. So <laughs> she had an impulse at midnight to start talking about that, this show that we're going to do together in February. Mm -hmm. so, so all I did was I left the group. And I just knew my so. heart dropped. I was like, <laughs> in the morning, he's no. mad at me. I can tell. I just said... <laughs> Don't put me in a group text. Then. <laughs> group texts are annoying. They I mean, are. they're all right on the holidays, but then, then you're like, well, who is this person? Who's that person? And I don't even want them on the holidays, to be honest. <laughs> Jillian <laughs> looks like she's like, I think I could write a good story about group texts. Yeah, maybe <laughs> possibly. Do you know what else would be really cool? You br mentioned Asherokin. Mm -hmm. I've always been so fascinated with that town because there's only like one way in and out. Yep. And if there's like a flood, which happens often. They're stuck there. Yeah. You also can't go past like 25 miles an hour up and down that road. I heard the police are you know? aggressive. I mean, there's certain things you can get away with in life, you know, like anti-gravity, flying. You know, <laughs> but, <laughs> but going faster than 25 miles an hour on uh, that road dash Roken, you just cannot get away with that. Just how it is. Could you, you know? imagine what would happen but, if a flood came and the... That like road broke up. Oh, you don't have to imagine that happens sometimes. <laughs> and just ha I mean, it doesn't break up, but like sometimes the water level rises and they literally have to wait to get out of there. Yeah, that I mean, would be you look at downtown Northport actually during some torrential rains, you literally could like kayak, <laughs> kayak down the street. And, and people have. Yeah. There's videos on YouTube of people kayaking up and down Main Street when that happens. Yeah, so. I used to live in Huntington for a short while, and I loved it. The, yeah. There's nothing like the community there. You know that that main bookstore closed down. Yeah, book review. Yeah, but, book but they review. just, um, you know, I think like a like a sort of a sequel store just reopened. The, oh, really? Uh, yeah, the next chapter. Um, it was. It's not the owners. Clever. It's it's a. Uh, you know, I think it was a manager of, of a previous place, and they, you know, so they just kind of reopened, I think. And they reopened in the same store or a different location? Nah, different store, farther okay. up the road. I think they, they they were renting the previous one. I think they bought a new one or whatever, but... The book uh, review was huge. It yeah, was I know, yeah, it, yeah, was. Yeah. it was. You know, but, uh, yeah, That's I haven't... just a timer. Yeah, I haven't been there yet, the, but uh, it, look, it looks good, so or what, you know. So far, that's all it looks good. I mean, I would yeah. definitely say Shop Local, you know, you guys have the independent books, those, those you know, the ones you publish... Well, it's not self-publishing. You are a publishing house, correct? Yes. Like, yeah. that's that's really impressive. I had no idea we had a publishing house on Long Island. Like, Yeah, well, I mean, Local Gems Press, it's, uh, you know, it was around, actually, since uh, 2010. Um, and it started with, you know, one poetry anthology by accident. Uh, I tell everybody I started the publishing company by accident because, <laughs> you know, I like to say that, yeah, when I was five and they asked you what you wanted to do, I was like, I want to be a publisher. But, you know, it wasn't really like that. <laughs> yeah. I was in graduate school at the time and I was studying to be a full-time college professor until I got to do the part-time college professor thing and realized don't want to do that full time yeah, anymore. You just wait too much. Students and kids are horrible. Uh, it's more the oversight and oh. the committee meetings and some of the personality clashes with other professors and all mm. that stuff. But um, yeah, so I was in grad school at the time studying for that, and I was part of um, you know the club, uh, the poetry club they had at the college, and it was you know more performance poetry, spoken wordy stuff. I was also writing at the time for a little hyper local newspaper called the Examiner, which was just an online paper, uh, as the you know for Long Island poetry. So I was going around to like all the events. I, I mean, I've been going to poetry events you know around here since since high school, but so I went around to all those places. I was writing articles about them, and I kept having this idea that I wanted to get these two groups of people into the same room, you know, because they were different styles, and I thought they'd appreciate each other. And they'd be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, that's great," and then promptly not come, <laughs> you know, because I didn't I didn't have the street cred back then that I do now when it comes oh. to poetry. So. I was like just thinking like what can I do to get them all in the same room and I was like you know if I took a bunch of their poems and I put them into a book they'd have to come into the same room because I don't want to get the book you know and so I had experience self-publishing my own not so good poetry collections from high school that sadly my publishing partner still has some copies of but that's, that's beside the point but um, so I knew how to format a book and get it printed so I did this, we gathered up about 40 poets, you know, some from the club, some from the Long Island poetry scene. Uh, you know, we used the, the budget at, at Dowling College's Spoken Word Club uh, with the SGA to have a big launch party in the, in the Vanderbilt uh, mansion where we, you know, was part of the campus. Nice. Pizza, oh, that's you know, cool, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. know, pizzas, you know, all that stuff, just, you know, bled their budget dry to have the event. <laughs> Got about 50, 60 people there, you know, from the book, wanted to come out, had a marathon reading of all those poets. Everybody was so happy. It was great. Yay. Congrats. I'm like, I finally, yay. My scheme was complete. I finally got them together. Then people come up, oh, this was great. When's the next anthology coming out? And I'm like, the next one? 
You, it you, is you, an you, anthology. You, you mean I got to do another one? And so, <laughs> and then there was a second one, and a third, and a fourth, and it became an annual thing. And then my publishing partner moved from Texas to Virginia. He wanted to do it there, so we started doing it there. Then we sort of started doing anthologies in the states between where we were. So coming up and down from Virginia, New York, we'd kind of do stops and be with people there. And then it was just like, there, there's a lot of places out there that didn't have any kind of local publication for poetry, so we started kind of just filling in the gaps up and down the East Coast with that, and so now, the, like, I honestly have lost track of how many there are, and then, of course, as time went on, people were like, oh, well, you do anthologies, but I have, you know, an individual poetry collection, will you do that? And so we did that, you know, for a while, too. I mean, now we kind of do that more, like, within stricter limits, uh, you know, because we just had too much of a demand for, for that at that point, but that was just sort of how it evolved. It wasn't like a grand plan. It just kind of, like, there was a need, it got filled, and then suddenly there was more of a need, so Oh, that's did great. That. Yeah. Now, you said you did uh, poetry reading since you were in high school. You went to different places. Did you ever go there was a, co uh, a coffee ha shop connected to a bakery in Islip on Main Street? Um, and it was like the Live Poets Society, I think they call themselves. Do you know what the uh, cafe place was called? Or the yeah, the Classic Cakes Cafe. You know, I heard of that, but that, that may have been a little bit before my time because right. there was... Uh, I know that we did things at the Wild Child Tattoo Cafe in Merrick. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. My first, my, yeah, my, I used to um, actually go to Borders and Comac back yeah, in 2003. Yeah, I remember that. And then that got switched over to uh, Starbucks and Comac because then Borders, you know, eventually closed. And then we did yeah. we did the Belmore Bean, actually, uh, you know, not yeah. that far from here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Belmore Library, uh, Sa Sachem Library. You know, we've done it all, like, you know. The Nassau Belmore Camp. Bean used to have comedy shows, too. That's why. I yeah, and we used to get some, yeah. some of you guys, actually, because, you know, it was like there was a Monday night comedy night three of them went, and then one of them was the poetry one and so sometimes yeah, some that's right. some com you know comedy open micers would actually come to our poetry thing and start doing comedy in the middle of the poetry oh so. boy tough crowd yeah i love that this whole thing is built on you being facetious yeah. you're like how do i get these people in the same room and now you're you you are a publishing company yeah that, that and have a bookstore Mm -hmm. And special events. <laughs> That's great. I I envy you. Yeah. No, I do. I'm... Yeah, I mean, it really is kind of a you know, like having the bookstore is kind of a dream come true because you know, a long time ago, I was always thinking I would love to have a place like that, and you know, I mean, you know, it took thirteen years, but you know, eventually it happened, and so you did. Know. You guys started together. Yeah. No, we were. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we basically decided uh, at a certain point, like, start talking about the idea. It's like you know. Because, I mean, originally, you know, she uh, she wanted to go for uh, library science when, you yeah. know, she was a... The degree would have cost me $40,000 that <coughs> I did not have, and there were no job openings for 10 years. There's still oh, no wow. job openings right, at so, this time, yeah. yeah. Because I, um, I did volunteer work at my library when I was living in California, and I loved it. You know, I'd help run the summer reading program, and kids would come up to me and say, oh, I love this book. What can I read next? And I'd say, well, read this one. And we would give out really cool prizes, like, you know, start with, like, a sticker or a pencil, but you could work your way up to, like, a free ice cream or a free Happy Meal. What? Yeah. <laughs> Can I do this at your place? <laughs> we did yeah, have yes, a summer reading program this past year. And I could get ice cream if I, like, read ten books? Uh, uh, actually, yes. Well, no, well, you can't because you're not a kid. But, right. uh, but, but, but Can we make an exception? <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you could bribe your toddler to maybe share it with you. Yeah, you I know, probably whatever. could. Cause, yeah. Yeah, cause we, and actually, ice cream was one of the prizes because yes. uh, we, we, you know, we like to partner with some of the local businesses. So we went down in downtown Northport. There was an ice cream shop there. Mixed we ice got, cream. Delicious ice cream. Yeah, yes. we got a bunch of their gift certificates. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Yeah. And then the pizza place across the street, you know, things like that that we got like little, oh, just pizza? little prizes for. Oh. There is nothing I mean, like the Northport, like Huntington, like that area mm -hmm. is such a community-based area. And I really feel like a lot of people like are, will come together to help you. I'm from yeah. Merrick, from Nassau, like, you know, the mean streets. And I don't <laughs> feel like that community is the same as it is in the North Shore in that area. I love it there. Love it. And I cannot wait to come visit your bookstore. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. Northport loves Northport. Do we have know. to play a video? What? No, I, oh. we don't have video, but we have some stills of the bookshop. Oh. Uh, we showed a couple at the end of the videos, but we have, of the bookshop, we have, uh, let's see what we have. There's uh, the Doggy Bards bookshop mm -hmm. on, uh, what's the street again? Larkfield Road. Larkfield oh, Road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's 13 Dog <laughs> Tales. And I think we might have the logo, maybe. I don't know if I sent that. No. No, it's just us. Oh, well. yeah. Surprise! <laughs> just us. So you guys were together mm -hmm. since college, high school? Yeah, we actually uh, we, we actually met in the writing club at, at Dowling College, the other writing club. There were two. There was a poetry one, and then there was just a general creative writing club called the Raven's Quill, okay. which she co-founded. And so we met uh, during that or whatever, and then we actually we started a genre fiction publication from that club or whatever called The Conspiracy that we did that for a while. Okay, and I love that name. Yeah. <laughs> now yeah. tell me more about this. 
romance that happened, <laughs> and then you guys stood together, made a publishing house, made a made a bookstore, giving back to our community, getting kids to read. Like, I want to hear about this ten year progression. <laughs> this is this is what I'm in it for. When did you first you first met ten years ago? Uh, we met actually. It was the summer of. 2000 and well, it was 2010, right? Yes, yeah, it was. yeah, Twelve years ago. yeah. And it was at the uh, there was act this was actually when the the writing club had been formed, but hadn't actually had official meetings during the school year yet. So there was like sort of like an impromptu one over the summer just to kind of get people together. There was only four people there, and we were two of them, yes. or whatever. And uh, so, so that was not a lot to choose from. <laughs> well, that was when we first <laughs> met. Oh man, she's so cold. Yeah. Now the funny she thing said. is, like at the time, we actually both were dating different people, or whatever. The yes. other two at yeah. the club. <laughs> no, her, her. My, my boyfriend at the time was uh, actually living in Arizona. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it was a long-distance relationship, but you know, we ended up—we were best friends growing up. Uh, when I moved to California, we were best friends, and we just ended up working better as friends. That's all. Okay. Hey, yeah. If Jen offends you in any way, just bring that up. I don't mean to be offensive, by the way. If you know, like, I am a really yeah. nice person. I swear. I just don't have a filter. Oh. Oh, I like that's like something out of the mind of Clive Barker. I like it. <laughs> Reminds me of Audrey yeah. too, actually. Yes. A little bit. Yeah. So. Feed me. <laughs> But yeah, so that was, you know, so we knew each other for a little while before we I have got a lot together. of animated things. I always buy them. That hand, usually, that hand. Yeah, you, you, you can see what the hand's doing, yeah, though, based on that, though. See, that, that, was, that was a surprise. Oh, this yeah. isn't a battery? Does it mean no fucking No, I don't think I put batteries in it. For people like you. Yeah, I would mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, easily distracted, but yeah, I am interested I, uh, in this. So you guys met at a club in yeah, Dowling. We met at the writing club. We knew each other a little while before we got together because we were both with different people or whatever. Obviously, those didn't work out. And then, you know, we got together, and uh, it was, you know, that was, it was natural like that. There wasn't, like, no friction whatsoever. Wow, it was just, so like, great. totally perfect. And, um, you know, then I started, you know, bringing her to, like, my poetry events. We did a lot of stuff, you know, at the school with the writing. And, um, you know, kind of just went from there, you know, because it's like it started, you know, the, all the, the writing stuff, it was slow at first, and it just kind of grew as time went on. And then, you know, when COVID happened and stuff, we were talking about it, you know, the idea of the bookstore, because again, she wanted to be a librarian and work with books or whatever. And so this is kind of like doing that from a different angle uh, with less oversight, yeah. you know, and, and, and more uh, you know, ability to do stuff. So, you know, talked to her, she was just like, oh yeah, totally forward or whatever. I'm like, okay, so just came up with the plan, found the location, opened it up, came up with the schedule, what we were doing, and then just, you know, slightly improving on it a little day by day, hopefully, <laughs> you know. If I worked with That's my good. husband, I would be on a no. true crime TV episode. <laughs> I would. I would. When, so like the first it. year that you were together, did you know that she wrote horror? Yeah. <laughs> you did. Okay. I, I knew that from the first day I met her, so, actually, because, you know, at the writing so club. <laughs> so you're together for 12 years. If you and Julian, Jillian, I'm sorry, have an argument or anything, do you like want to make up with her right away? <laughs> Are you like a, a scared that, you know, I don't want to get her angry? Yeah, like, well, she does. No, she does have an evil side that most people don't see. Now, but, <laughs> now the truth of the matter is like this. Sounds, oh, they'll this, see it if they read that. Oh, well, yeah, that's yeah. true. The, the thing mm -hmm. is, this this sounds like it's it's a crock of BS, but the truth is, we don't fight. <laughs> Like me and her really, we yeah, really I mean, don't like. I'll be I, honest with you. Yeah. If I was married to her, I wouldn't fight with her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's a survival <laughs> instinct. I also wouldn't thing, have but... any knives in the house, to be honest. Never yeah, know. no plastic. A lot of plastic. A lot of plastic. <laughs> we spar, but we don't fight. Yeah, we yeah. spar. Oh, you spar. <laughs> okay. I love that. Qu quite literally, we, we are both uh, martial artists. So this yeah. is a surprise we're... a minute. <laughs> like we're both okay. martial artists. She writes horror. Wow. Yeah. I can't. This is yeah, the best. <laughs> we'll, we will have to have you back on if you'd love to. We'd love to have you back. I think we we have Obviously. so much we could talk about. Yeah, no, because, uh, we, also, this is we need to we, go to the bookstore. We still have time, but I want James to read yes. a little from uh, his oh. anthology. Okay, sure. So this is just a poem from last year's edition, uh, only because this was the one I had in my car. I could have brought this year's edition, but I didn't know. Um, but yeah, this is from our annual publication called uh, Bard's Annual. Which uh, features roughly yeah, hold it up again. So, features roughly <laughs> a, features roughly 150 Long Island poets uh, from all the the boroughs of Long Island, pretty much, uh, including Queens. Even though they, they argue that they're not sometimes. Um, they're not. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we and this has been uh, going on for 12 years. So you know, the, the first anthology I did was called the Examination Anthology, which was like the preview to that, and that was just because a wordplay on being the poetry examiner. But then we did Bard's Annual the next year, and then it's been that ever since. So. So this poem is just called Grandpa's Advice. <clears throat> it's about you, Benny. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever watched the movie Home Alone? 
Macaulay Culkin, early 90s sensation, a hilarious movie containing a few things that were perhaps not so secretly not meant for children. Like that zip line, out the back bedroom window to the treehouse. An insurance nightmare to be sure, but to a kid looks so, so fun. I wanted one. Whereas any responsible parent would say no, my grandmother said, sure and rigged up a makeshift zip line for me from the two trees in her backyard using some kind of clothing line and a broken handle of a snow shovel, just perfect for my five-year-old imitation of Kevin McAllister. <laughs> so I climbed up the step ladder that my grandma provided for me, took hold of the handles, and whoosh! Zip! 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 Down the zip line! Bam! <laughs> right into the other tree, I fell to the ground and started crying. Eee! Hey! My grandpa said in a stern voice, commanding my attention and putting an immediate halt to my sobbing. Get up, walk it off, and do it again right. <laughs> I wiped my tears. That's what'll make you feel better. Shocked back to seriousness, I went back to the zip line and did it again, this time able to brace myself, control my movements, and not smash face first into the tree. How easy it would have been to sit there crying for who knows how long, focusing in on the bruises and the failure. In the 30 years since then, there have been plenty of times, plenty of more serious injuries, physically, emotionally, plenty of worse failures, but I've always done my best to remember those few words of wisdom. Get up, walk it off, do it again right. And true to Grandpa's advice, every time I follow that mantra, no matter how bad it is, I feel better. I really love yeah, like I'm, I'm like I'm, brought to tears on this one. I'm glad that you read that poem. I'm glad you didn't have your uh, latest, which I'm sure the <laughs> latest edition is probably excellent, and there's a lot of great poems. But I'm glad you read that poem. Thank you. That's great. I That's knew we really were going to have one definite talent on tonight. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's her husband. He's probably like the paper pusher. Like, you know. <laughs> and then you read that. I'm like, I honestly, Push. I'm brought to tears by that, how it comes around. And it is a beautiful story. Well, thank you. It's a beautiful poem, rather. But the story, wow. Yeah, true story. I, I actually, um, we sold my, my grandparents' house last year because, they, you know, they've both been gone now. But I actually, before we sold it, I went back to that tree and I actually read that poem in front of that tree. So I have that video up on uh, somewhere. I forget. Oh, I yeah. So much to keep track of. Yeah. Well, you have a website, right? <laughs> yeah, we, well, we have, I have a lot of websites. But yeah, for the, for the book story, yeah, dogyourbar.com. Uh, you know, we try to list our, you know, events on there. So it needs some updating sometimes, but we list, uh, you know, our regular events, uh, you know, uh, Ways to donate books because a lot of people, you know, that's one thing about the community. And do a lot you of people put videos on? You should put like videos yeah, we, of reading. From we do have a, a couple of YouTube channels. We have one for the bookstore, and I have another one for the, you know, the publishing company, uh, where we do, you know, because we do with the publishing company, we do a lot of seminars on publishing topics and things like that, and we kind of put up excerpts and things like that. Sometimes poetry, you know, recordings or snippets from poetry readings, things like that. So I have to tell you, I don't know if it's like the Christmas spirit, but I am like very touched right now. Like that was that was absolutely beautiful. Oh well, thank you. Yeah, and that was that was a true story too. So I find that that's. Uh, yeah, you know. I, I loved it. Yeah, I really did, and uh, you know. People have to go to the dog yard bar. You have to meet these people. You have to talk to them. Such interesting, interesting folks, and I, I'm. And there's I'm so shocked. many great books. Like I said, you walk in there and uh, you start looking around, and you you won't believe some of the you know books there. I I found uh, someone asked, "Is there?" A, a humor section where they have uh, something funny, and I, I was like, "You have Art Buckwald, <laughs> who, you know who who remembers Art Buckwald is great." Yeah, no, t tons of interesting stuff come through there. Like I was just about to say, we get, you know, when we opened it up, I mean, I, you know, I knew that there would be like some donations of books from the community. We were not prepared for how many. Like we need, we need a warehouse sometimes for actually how many books come in there. Um, you know, we actually started selling books uh, in bulk out of the back to like other book resellers and to teachers who want to fill up their classroom at a decent price or whatever That's because, fantastic. you know, it's like That's they just keep on coming in so much and yeah. And you have now, uh, you run this sale where uh, you buy a tote bag for $20, yes. yeah, that, 20 bucks, that, and you can fill the tote bag. Yeah, that, that. that one's always popular. Yeah, that basically, with the used books, you know, you, you know, 20 bucks, you'd get the tote bag. We provide the totes, and you can stuff them with as many used books as you want. Sometimes people are over that, and we're just like, oh, whatever, just include yeah, it in there. Yeah. But people get really... Get out of here. Yeah, no, they get really Tetris-y creative with uh, <laughs> how many yeah. that they stuff in there. Like, if it, like sometimes, like, there's a family, like, actually literally, like, just, like, putting them in, like, trying to, like, do it that way. And then some people come in, they're, like, they, they come up with, like, five or six totes, and they want to just buy all of them yeah. you know yeah. are the totes like with say the dog-eared bard on them 
Not yet. No, because that would looked, be worth the twenty bucks itself. Like, boom, worth it. That that is true. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. It's uh, you know, looking into uh, more things like that. Yeah. So far, we've got pencils with the you know the logo on it. Um, you gave us the idea for stickers, so we might just have to look into I that. I love stickers. That's fine. You know, we've got the you know the Bard's Brew Coffee, which which has the logo yeah, on it. Yeah, and, and the tea. The yeah, tea. The, the poet tea. Yeah, we had the tea before we had the store, but uh, you know, yeah, the poet tea. Every. What kind of tea is it? Green tea or? Uh, it's oh, a right. bunch of it's a bunch of different flavors. There's actually five flavors. Each one's named after a famous poem. Oh, the, wow. the, the green tea is called Leaves of Grass. The black tea is the raven. The red tea is Dante's Inferno. The mm. white tea is Snowy Evening. And we just recently, this last year, added an oolong called Ozymandias. So. All right, and this weekend, Santa is going to be in the bookshop. Santa! Yep, yep Santa, that's how, you know, that's how you know you've made it big. When Santa visits your store, you know, you know that you've made it. Right? And he's going to be yeah. there when? He's going to be here uh, this Saturday, the 17th, from 1 to 4 p.m. Uh, so you got kiddos, bring them over because, you know, going to, you know, tell Santa what they want and everybody comes in getting, you know, all the kids are getting a free gift and we've got free Great. hot chocolate for the kiddos, uh, free coffee for the adults and we're going to have some brownies and, you know, things like that. Going to be good holiday spirit. And when yeah. you go there, support your bookstore. Definitely finish up your, your holiday list and get some cool stuff. I love buying antique books. Uh, last year, I bought my one of my good friends, Katie, a hand-to-hand -hand combat book from World War II. Oh, wow. That was oh, like, yeah. yeah, that was issued to like <laughs> the Marine Corps or something. I love going to like thrift stores and antique, looking for like just really out of the box stuff. Claire hates it. One year, I thought because of her political leanings, I got a picture of Bill Clinton playing the saxophone that was signed. And I'm like, this is going to knock it out of the park. This is the best gift ever. And anytime I ask her what she wants, she's like, well, don't get me a picture of Bill Clinton playing the saxophone sign, <laughs> because I already have one. <laughs> anyway, look, I have to say, uh, since the way our show is, twi our next show is going to be on the 27th. Correct. So two days after Christmas. Mm -hmm. So that's when I'm waiting to buy a gift for Jen. I don't want anything is, from you, old man. It, no, I already got you something. But today, Jen was like, I'm not going to see you Christmas time. So Jen got me this cool watch that you can't really see. It's a Grateful Dead watch. <laughs> because she knows that I've oh, kind of awesome. OD'd on, some people OD on drugs. I'm ODing on the Grateful Dead. It's a I lot. Really it's a lot. And you know I can't tell time, so now you can tell me the time. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, you know, the one thing I love is that a lot of young people can't tell time with a face clock. So I tell them it's a sundial. I have a poem about that, actually. Not on me, but I have, right. a, I have a poem. I tell them it's a sundial. That. Take it out. Take it outside. And they're like, but Mr. Rizzuti, it's dark out. And I'm like, bring a flashlight with you. I still don't understand how the hour hand moves in conjunction with the minute hand, but like that's a whole See, kind of thing. They used to have a book on how to tell time. So that's why my son can tell time with a face clock because he, we taught him. He learned. Now everything's digital. Everything. The romance isn't lost on but me. Like, it, but I have my a watch son, right now. I think it's an hour off. My though. son has to teach me technology because I, I don't know technology. I'm, you're you're better than you come off. You do a lot of really what good the, stuff. I do the intro for the show. Yeah. Every intro is different. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. that's as good as I am with technology. Anyway, so... Uh, I think uh, time's up. Our time <laughs> I see is up. all zeros on that clock. Go to the dog want, eared bard. Thank you so much for Jillian and James Wagner. Thank you so much thank for, you for being on us. the show, thank and you. I hope you come back. Yeah, no, and, this, uh, was, this was a blast. It so, was. Go to the shop, go to the store, and purchase this book, and you can purchase the... Uh, the Bard's Annual. The yep. Bard's Annual, the uh, latest one. Mm-hmm. So Finish your holiday there, shopping. Buy these books... <laughs> Why so? I'm going for tea. I'm gonna go for tea. I'm seriously am. You would go for tea. See, I'm. I'm gonna go for the coffee. You're open Sunday, but you're not open. Uh, you're open uh, Saturday, Sunday. You're not open Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, Monday, Tuesday we're closed, but we're open Wednesday through Saturday, eleven to seven, and Sundays twelve to six, and sometimes mm -hmm. later if we have events in the evening. So. All right, great. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, thank you, Jen. Thank you for everything for being my. My Thank best co-host. Thank you. You're the only, only woman, The only woman co-host who hasn't beat me up. Yeah. So thank you for that. Take care, everyone. Have a Bye. Merry Christmas. We'll Merry see you Christmas. two days later. <laughs> two days after Christmas.